which is going to be our MC. Where did she go? She slid. All right. <laughs> All right, round of applause. Uh, so, fifth uh, lightning talk today. Yay! Woo! <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, before we begin, if you guys need a chair, uh, feel free to grab a chair and sit down. Uh, we want to thank a few people first. Jack, who's been uh, coordinating the lightning talks for this month. Thanks, Jack. And June and Brian. Now Brian does not know how to code. But that is no reason to hate him, people. Because you will see him um, doing things like moving furniture around and raising money for Hacker Dojo. These things also need to happen. So hey, thanks Brian for everything you do. Our first speaker is Jesse. Okay. Uh, so Jesse is going to give a lightning talk on how to give a lightning talk. And once he's done, you can ask him questions about um, how to measure the temperature of trucks, which is a project he's working on. And it does not involve touching random trucks. Thank you, everybody. Um, do you need this, Jack? Because like, I'm going to go over here and talk. I usually use my hands and I walk around. All right. All right. This, I've done this talk about a dozen times in different places. I haven't done it here at the Hacker Dojo. I did something similar at the last place there. So the way this works is I guarantee I'll be done in less than five minutes. That's the way this works. So I need a volunteer, somebody's going to time me. Who wants to be a volunteer here? Oh, right there, young lady. Excellent. <laughs> All right, you got an egg timer, stopwatch thing? That's I'll awesome. on your first talk. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm moving on here. Okay. So uh, I'm Jesse Monroy. Everybody, thank you for coming here tonight. Um, Packer Dojo, and we're going to, a few highlights and points and tips on how to do a lightning talk. Right? So this, this is what you should expect tonight when I'm talking. And I haven't done this in a while, so excuse me for reading. That's like a bad thing to read your own things. <laughs> uh, what you should and should not do, very important. That's the first thing to do. Uh, general tips for presentation, awesome. Uh, presentation medium, PDF, that kind of stuff. What kind of stuff are you be using? Uh, suggested format and review of highlight points. Thank you, we'll go up that next one. Okay, it should be short, effective and should be talking to your audience. So don't be talking HTML5 if you're talking to, you know, Python people or Boy Scouts maybe, right? Or if you're doing robotics, don't be talking about software. Maybe people don't want to hear about that, right? This is a lightning talk. You want to get to your point and get to it right away, okay? Got to be interested to your thing. Um, it should not be a pitch about your company. Now, there's a few exceptions here on this one, so we're just going to make that one a little light. It's not a place to demo your product unless that is your lightning talk. And that's very difficult, and sometimes the demo gods are out to get you. So that one's very difficult, okay? And it's not a place for recruiting. Now, it's, that's not to say we're not hiring at the end or somewhere in the middle, but don't spend the whole time telling people how you're a great company to work at and fantastic stuff like that. All right, general rules. One slide, one minute, right? And so that's generally what you work on. Uh, five to six bullets maximum. This is very important. Now, font size is important. I, I think I've got that on there. Uh, white on black. Very, very, very important. I cannot tell you how many times I've been to a talk and they decided to do Paisley and an Earth Tone <laughs> together, and I can't even read it. I'm in the back row, and I'm like, can you make the font bigger? Doesn't work. Doesn't work. You want to make sure you get the black on white or high contrast and nice large fonts. That's what you want. All right? Next thing. All right, now, this is pretty important. At this point, you should realize that you're bringing good news to your audience. You're preaching the gospel, as they say. That's your job. That's why you're standing up there. And you want other people to take that message away with them. 
They don't want, you don't just want to sit there and yammer on and monologue about what's going on. You want other people to take that message with them wherever they're going. So typically we used to hand out brochures for this. We're now in the modern age. Supposedly we're not going to use paper. Put it on a wiki, PDF, text file, HTML. Doesn't matter. Make sure people can get to it, okay? All right. The five slides. So as you notice, the first slide is about me, who I am. <laughs> I didn't say I was a PhD because I'm not, and really nobody cares about that kind of stuff. So don't even put that in your lightning talk, right? Next thing is uh, what people should expect. Very important. It's very difficult for people to sit there and go, is he ever going to get to what I want to talk about? Because that is really the fundamental thing. It's like I go to see a lot of people do talks, conferences, and so forth. I go, what are they boring me about today? You get that feeling too a lot of times. So let people know where you're going right off the bat, okay? Ah, the meat, what it is you're talking about. So that is in there, that's where I went to. And what's the next one there? Oh, the last slide. Okay, so we're almost there, believe it or not. You gotta tell people where to find that document that you just talked about. Oh, I'm gonna skip this one to conserve time a little bit here because the next slide is really what I want people to see. Okay, that's the URL, that's a QR code. Sometimes people take pictures and sometimes there's an email list there. And I'm done. <laughs> Young lady, time please. 39 seconds left. 39 seconds left. Gentlemen over here. Do you run the BSD Master Index? That is my website, yes, correct, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? Any questions? What does BSD mean? BSD, Berkeley Software Distribution. Now, some of you may know Linux. Okay, Linux couldn't exist without BSD. Now, let me not go into that. I don't want to start a religious turf war here. But if you have any interesting questions or you just want to bore me, or better yet, if you want to have a beer, it's back there and I'll be there. Thank you very much. I almost forgot. Sophie, here you go. <laughs> nice. Um, a dollar in the food fund. <laughs> I got this card somewhere. I'm broke. Nothing. A dollar accepted. <laughs> Speaking of things interesting to the audience, um, I wanted to date thought, you know, like fans and myself and Asgardian princes. But now it turns out I can date, uh, I don't know, not her, I can beat her. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Cool. And speaking of dating, we have VS here who has his own dating service. And Mashable called the service like one of the 15 hottest dating services around. And he was interviewed by Robert Scoble. VS, yes. yes. you have the call. Yes, thank you very much. Good. <laughs> Can I put it in my hands? Oh, yes, you play this stuff. No, I think you meant, no, the, he meant the music. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Okay. Uh, my name is VS. VS Joshi. Yay! Thank you very much. <laughs> So I'm a founder of a startup called Trint Me. Okay, Trint means true intentions. Here's the challenge. When I was in college, I was interested in the opposite sex. Okay, actually, no, that didn't come out right. I I am still interested in the opposite sex. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, I was interested, and I took my first step with many of the girls that I knew. I mean. I started with one, but it went on increasing because it was never a success, yeah? <laughs> and whenever I took the next step with uh, all the girls that I knew, it was a disaster every time, okay? <laughs> I was rejected left, right, and center, okay? <laughs> And it's okay, I mean, you know, I'm used to getting rejected and things like that, so that was not a problem. The challenge was my relationship with all these girls was terminated the moment I opened my mouth, yeah? Huh? But then, 
not expressing your true intention maybe i didn't have the knack of expressing my feelings and intentions in the right way and i think there are many of us like that you know who don't have that exact knack of uh, who are not pick up artists and things like that so anyway so i it was a disaster every time i expressed my intentions but then not expressing my true intentions is not a solution either because there are a lot of missed opportunities so the situation is damned if you say something and damned if you don't that is the problem and that is the problem my startup is trying to solve good enough fair enough okay okay cool <laughs> so uh, we launched in a couple of colleges we received a couple of awards in those couple of colleges and uh, we were also featured in tech crunch and uh, mashable as uh, she mentioned that okay they called us one of the hottest dating apps again it is all based upon some colleges where we launched and we are at a stage where we would like to launch it uh, on a bigger scale and uh, i am looking for people who can help uh, again we it's a mobile app it's a social app we don't want to call it a dating app because uh, uh, dating is about helping you meet new people we say we are not trying to help you meet with, meet with new people that is not the problem we are trying to solve we are trying to solve the problem of you know somebody and you want to take the next step with that somebody and you are hesitant to take that next step that is the problem we are trying to solve okay so i'm looking for so, uh, mobile app developers i'm looking for uh, social media marketing people so if in case there's anybody on those lines please do contact me i'm over here all the time okay thank you okay any questions yeah sorry no <laughs> <laughs> yeah so this is between your friends and friends of friends so you will not see strangers on this application people who see on your screen are either your friends or they are friends of your friends okay. so and then yes the whole idea is that okay you go through your uh, list of friends we provide you a menu of intentions what are your intentions with let's say misha and those intentions range from hey i want to give her a compliment to i want to sleep with her whatever those intentions are yeah and uh, you select whatever your intentions are nobody knows a thing it is just merely saved on our app nobody knows that what your intentions are for michel even michel doesn't know about it but imagine that this fear of rejection this fear of embarrassment is gone from each and every person okay and yes people can just say okay yeah, i would like to expose you to so many people or something like that and this application becomes a repository for people's intentions for each other and the application figures out if there is a match then the application will tell both of them hey you both want to have a coffee with each other it won't tell the other person that you want to sleep with her but she i mean she will never know that thing yeah okay go no? yeah what is your conversion rate <laughs> the cold reaction uh we'll talk about it later okay not this one okay i think uh he is waving me off i guess okay cool guys thank you very much thank you okay thanks thanks we are and if you guys have questions for him we as will be happy to defeat you in pong play a ping pong He is a reigning dojo champion for TT. Uh, speaking of uh, not being able to say things out loud, I think Star Wars covered that when um, Jar Jar Bing says Misa speak and Liam Neeson was like yeah but you know that doesn't mean Misa you sa intelligent. Uh our next speaker is John and uh, he studied econometrics but got into gaming. And yesterday he was sharing this story about how Best Buy invested in a gaming company just so they could have the option of having the game released to them a bit earlier than to the rest of the other rest of the gaming outlets retail outlets um he's also better at introducing himself than i will ever be so hey john introduce yourself Uh, while Jack helps me get set up here, give you a few minutes of intro. Uh, my name is John, but in the video game business, I go by Red Bullion. It's my gamer name. Uh, I used to own the fifth biggest video game studio in Vancouver, which I sold to my publisher Ubisoft 12 years ago, and I've sort of been retired ever since. Uh, since then, I got a chance to work. I produced the first ever mobile first-person shooter, Call of Duty, for Engage. I produced the first ever uh, role-playing game for mobile, Elder Scrolls, for Engage. 
Uh, so it's one of those truisms, just like in business, a bank will loan you money as soon as you don't, you can prove you don't need it. A video game publisher will give you the 100 person staff to make a big game as, as, soon, as, you're, as soon as you're sort of out of the, out of the business. Okay, uh, by about 2008, 2009, the last time I bothered to work full time, uh, my people and I were making investments in companies, but other people would come to me and say, well, we, we want an investment, and I decided to come up with a talk which discussed other ways of raising money for your startup, other than selling equity. Um, now, an entrepreneur's wet dream is to have three years of capital sitting in the bank and be able to just tinker away and get your stuff perfect while, while you want. Now, put up your hand if you have that exact situation set up. Right, I didn't think so, a lot of people don't. I, I, you know, uh, I consider myself the luckiest man in the world, uh, but I wanna share some of the things I learned along the way. Uh, John Strappa, aka Red Bullion. This is the special sauce presentation I give in Vancouver regularly. Uh, there's three traditional ways to, to fund a company, either by bootstrapping, or by selling equity, or by debt, which is to say uh, selling a, an option to purchase a chunk of your company to a company in exchange for something which will essentially be a loan if things don't work out. Uh, I wanted to talk briefly about six different ways of raising money that are entirely outside of that. We're going to talk about strategic ecosystem, sponsored, philanthropic, crowdsourcing, factored, and white label. Uh, also, I'm giving the full talk, 45 minutes at Monday in the classroom over there at, from 5 to 5.45, was it? Or 6 to 6.45, five, sometime. But this is just a teaser, if you will. This is my MVP. Woo. All right. So uh, strategic ecosystem. Uh, when I was at Nokia Engage, I became familiar that two uh, um, mobile phone carriers in Europe actually paid Nokia a lot of money to uh, Orange in France and Vodafone in the UK to have a preferential install so that people that wanted to play multiplayer on the Engage would would uh, uh, switch to them as a carrier. So if you can figure out a way in which your product, your service, your idea, help somebody accomplish their goals in their ecosystem, they will literally rock a dump truck of money up in front of your door. Well, not literally, but th there's a lot of money to be had and people are, are often keen if you can solve their problem with your project. Uh, another one, it wasn't Battlefield, but another first person shooter I worked on of the same sort of scale, uh, a national retailer of consumer electronics goods I can't name who paid the publisher I was working at <laughs> over $2 million for the right to sell the version of the first person shooter we were working on a week early. And they gave us the money like two years in advance and they never even exercised. They thought if they got, call of, they thought if they got the video game early, they could sell more TVs and sound systems and you know the, the, the various accompanying parts. However, they weren't even ready to do it. But the main thing is, we got the sponsored development. They wanted the right to sell the product early so they could sell other stuff. Uh, factored, uh, 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 when we produced Jackie Chan Stuntmaster at Radical Entertainment, I was at, after working on FIFA soccer at EA Sports in the mid-90s, I went to Radical, which was the biggest uh, independent developer in the world. We sold Jackie Chan Stuntmaster to Sony Computer Entertainment Europe. That's actually their lobby. How's that for a cool office? <laughs> they gave us $2 million up front in exchange, they would recoup the first $2.8 million and then we split the revenue 50-50, but that gave us the $2 million we needed for my team and I to make the game. So if you can think of a way in which your product is going to go to retail and somebody that wants to help sell that so that they get the lion's share of the money, they will often give you the money up front. And I can't stress enough, some, I think it was Richard, somebody made the point that a lot of this is very video game industry specific or one has to have gotten to a certain echelon in the org chart of life before anyone will take it serious. My goal with this presentation is just to get you thinking about ways in which the stuff you're working on, these great ideas you're having, could be so useful to somebody else they'll pay for it. So method three was factored. They paid us up front in exchange for recouping theirs first and then splitting the revenues. Uh, philanthropic, when I produced the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation games that uh, tied in with uh, Battle of the Blades. How stereotypical is that? Down in the United States, they have uh, 
Dancing with the Stars. In Canada, it's, it's figure skating. Go figure as a television show. But um, the Bell Fund gave, I applied for a grant. I got $600,000 from the Bell Fund. I'm sure there's uh, equivalents in the US that are similar. Uh, OEM White Label is the second to last one. Uh, when I was at a small company called Parallel Games, we made for a television show, Survivor, a, a second screen game, but we actually, they paid us for their game, but we kept all the technology and put it into our own NHL Hockey Super League game. So that's another way in which, if you're making software for somebody, and by the way, uh, I don't ever want a dollar or need a penny from any of you, but I'm happy to, to look at your individual situation for 30 seconds and make a recommendation or two. But to, for, with no, you get what you pay for, though, like no, no guarantees. So o original equipment manufacturing or white label is where we came up with Survivor Super League and then turned it around and also had our hockey game. Uh, and then crowdfunding. Two of my best friends from Vancouver have a really cool card game coming that's kind of like Magic the Gathering meets Tim Burton. I just met them up here in Mountain View last night. They've got all their funding together. They're moving ahead. It's going well. But I helped them. In Canada, you couldn't do Kickstarter until last year. And I had offices on both sides of the border. So we actually used my bank account. That's how I got to know them. So there you go. Uh, many ref methods to raise funds for a startup. John Strop at mail.com. Uh, next presenter is Anil, and uh, I was thinking of you know the best way to introduce Anil, but then I figured most of you guys know him. He's the dude who's always hauling a cart. Did we agree on a cart, uh, a four-wheeled cart, pulling and pushing hardware stuff? So he and Carlos actually, along with David and a bunch of us, clean up the maker space and the hardware labs. So thank you for uh, helping us there. Anil. And, and other dudes who helped, including Clayton. And of course, Clayton. <laughs> oh, I think Jun was also there. Would you take a bow for us, Clayton? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Stop stealing my life. <laughs> <laughs> Anil studied physics and then got into electronics. He's got an app which is going to launch in the next uh, 10 days or so. Hopefully. You have the phone. We switch from one of the inputs to the other. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> hey everyone. Uh, so you can start time jump. Uh, so what I'm going to be talking about today is uh, we, most of you are probably familiar with object-oriented programming and ways to build larger projects from smaller pieces of existing code. So I'm trying to adapt that to hardware. So let's imagine you have every device in this room, every electronic device in this room consists of not only code, but also an actual hard element, which is the circuitry inside. Um, and what's happening in the last few years is that uh, people have started to make their own circuitry to build their own devices. Uh, no longer do you have to buy the exact appliance that's sold to you, but you can make your own appliance. And I want to facilitate that, but I want to do it in a way which takes it from taking a month to make your first design to doing it within 48 hours. So that will be the goal of, of this project, and I'll talk about how I will achieve that. So really quick, when you think about uh, electronics, you imagine a circuit <coughs> schematic that looks like what you see on the top there. Um, of course, when you bring it to reality, you need a bunch of wires and components and things like that. So you end up with what you see on the bottom. By the way, how many people here are programmers versus hardware enthusiasts? So programmers, OK. And electronics hardware enthusiasts? 
<laughs> five, six, okay. Um, but everybody knows that there's a PCB inside every electronic device that exists, right? Okay, it does. <laughs> so, asking us to so here we go. This is what you get when you try to wire everything up according to the schematic. It's really messy, and when you look at it, you don't even want to pursue electronics anymore. Uh, <laughs> if you're seeing this for the first time. And then there have come products like Arduino, um, which was really a very simple concept, but it blew up uh, to affect the entire world of electronics. So it allows really quick prototyping, the kind of prototyping that you can do with software, except um, with electronics. And then there's also a method called stripboard, which is slightly more compact. It looks a little more beautiful, at least on the top. And then you have this on the bottom. <laughs> so not so hot. Um, people have started to make their own uh, PCBs. Uh, we're also trying that here in the makerspace in that corner. Um, but it's pretty complicated and you get fairly messy results like this. Oh yeah. I just put this in just for fun. Um, just saw this the other day. Some guy tried to uh, solder this really tiny chip. You can see the, the side length of that chip is five millimeters. So smaller than your fingernail. Uh, he tried to solder that to a strip board and the method that he used is very uh, abnormal. So he just used copper wires that went from each pad to a larger pin. And this probably took him like six hours or something like that. Alright, so uh, I'm gonna speed up now. So there's a lot of steps if you want to do a real PCB though. And until these days, PCBs have been uh, mainly targeted toward like huge electronics manufacturers who can actually afford to do it in volume so that the prices are low enough. So what I did is I created this uh, this application. Can everyone hear me if I talk to you? Yep. All right. So I created this application where it allows you to create your own schematic uh, once you create it in some external software that's also acceptable. And then you can upload your files here. So I'm going to show a quick demo. Uh, oh, ignore the, uh, the, the hippo on the corner. But if you click create a new board, uh, that's just one step. And then the second step is to upload your files which is created from your schematic. Let's say, just use some file sets and write them back here. Okay, and then it immediately uploads them to a server on uh, Amazon EC2. And then um, it generates, automatically generates the appearance of what each layer of your PCB will look like. But here's the best part. So once you click Generate and Build, uh, it takes some time because I used the, the cheapest EC2 <laughs> option there. Um, and it gives you an actual simulation of what your, is that one minute? Okay. You can move over. Okay. Can talk a little longer. Uh, this is what the actual PCB will look like when it's in your hands. And you can actually see what it will look like so you can verify everything is good. And you can order it for as low as five to six bucks and get it delivered in 48 hours. So. <laughs> By this, I'm hoping to um, eliminate all fear of electronics and allow more and more makers to build their own products and one day realize uh, a world where we can print electronics just like we now 3D print plastic. Thank you. Thanks, man. This is amazing. Um, quick word. The five-minute duration of the talk is more like guidelines and rules to quote Jack Sparrow. Are you guys having fun? <laughs> Good. Um, have a nice evening. Live long and prosper and thanks for coming people. Quick announcement. My name is Marina and I help people improve their communication skills. We'll be having a mini workshop in the classroom in about 15 minutes on body language. Uh, how to speak with more authority and more confidence. This is both for presenting and for one-on-ones. Everybody here is welcome. I believe there's room for about 20 people there. It'll be short, about 30 minutes, and it'll be interactive. Um, so if you're interested, just stop on by uh, because it's so short.
the entire environment in 15 minutes.